All right, everybody. Welcome to the Yarn Garage. Uh, this is kind of a long time coming. I've been planning to make this video for a really, really long time. Uh, wanted to unbox a Krenzo Ultimate package. Uh, this is the portable solution. And, um, you know, show you how it goes together. It's been a number of years since I've really made any videos on the, on the cart model. And um, we actually have them in stock for the first time in a long time, depending on when you're watching this. And my goal here is we're transitioning away from drop shipping them to stocking and shipping them from here. Uh, so I wanted to show you how it would show up. This is basically the three boxes you would get if you ordered the package. And uh, I wanted to put it together, wash a car, talk to you about the uh, M2 giveaway, and it's probably a pretty long video, uh, but wanted to uh, take this thing apart. Uh, I will sell this, so you know, hit me up, you know, shoot me a message if you want to buy this one. Uh, it'll be an open box, I guess. Uh, we're gonna use it once here together. And uh, you know, I probably should keep one of these here handy, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to unbox it, put it together, and uh, show you how it works. So let's get rolling. I would love to see your face when this sucker shows up at your door, and it's a good 85 pounds, you know, 90 pounds, something like that in the box. Uh, but what we do in order to make this work, so it's double packed, and even then it's still difficult to get this sucker to you because they you know, tend to punt these things quite a bit. Uh, but as you can see, we put it in a, uh, I'll show you in a second here, but we put it in a secondary box. So there's a box inside of the box, and then we actually take all the Krenzel accessories out. Um, so they all come out and go on the side here. Uh, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how this thing would show up at your door. So let's unbox the pressure washer first. So you can buy just this as a standalone. I would highly suggest you don't. Uh, where this whole thing started is that, you know, I bought one of these from God knows where. You know, and like, I think, I think I probably got mine like 2011 or 12 or something like that. I saved up and waited and waited and waited. Um, what I was doing uh, originally when I first got this is I was doing, um, I was washing the wheels with a hose, and so some of my first videos were showing the $500 hose, which was the Ely hose reel, and the hose we now sell, which Adams had for a really short period of time, that I think I paid like 275 bucks for the, just the hose. Uh, and then I was using the Ely, uh, the Ely nozzle, and I was using that to do the wheels, so I dragged the hose out to do the wheels, uh, and then I would drag the pressure washer out to do the foaming and to wash the car, but I was using the giant wand that came with it. And so that was the original, my original use, or how I, my use case, how I was using this thing. So I would suggest unboxing it like so. <clears throat> and here's the Krenzel box inside. Everything about this tank is difficult because it's so heavy to get it unboxed. All right, we'll set that aside in case I need to ship it. All right, so let's see, we open it this way. But yeah, so I got this puppy, done, I guess it's been a decade ago now, and um, I guess I don't have one. These have been in such short supply and so hard to get that I sold mine and I think I sold it to Jeff. And I've never, so I haven't had one of these myself for a number of years. Um, but this is how it, how it all got started. And you know, I bought one of these because I didn't want to buy some junk at Home Depot. You know, I paid, they really haven't gone up that much in price. I paid, I remember I paid $11.99 in 2012, so 1200 bucks for the thing. And I'll show you in a second here, but we just screwed it together. So I screwed the thing together. Here's the manual, little cap on the pressure gauge, take that off. Um, but I was using the thing, because, you know, just the way it came out of the box, which is a terrible way to use it for washing cars. Let's take this sucker like this. power cord here, so GFCI power cord. So this is where these differ. My friends at uh, Dirt Killer USA, they 
import the power cords. I think they get them from something like Guatemala or something like that. So they import the power cords into Germany. So I'm pretty sure that the guys in the US are the ones that do to source the power cord. Um, and then they have it installed in Germany before they ship it out. And so this is the hose intake uh, or intake for uh, soap, which we're just going to just gently pull it off. Pull it off, I throw it away because you, you're never gonna do soap injection unless you're cleaning your deck or something. And even then, I don't know that it's really all that effective, especially on this machine. But I'll just take that for now. I'm just gonna throw it in the box. So notice there was water in there. These are all tested in Germany before they leave. They're not tested in the US, but they're tested, I believe, on the bench before they leave the you know, German production facility. <clears throat> and we bring them in and they come in the port of Baltimore and then I usually get a container. I'm starting to get to containers here. So first thing to mention when you're using this operationally, you have to operate it this way on its side. A couple of funny stories, two pretty high volume detailing facilities. One, my friend John and John Clevin who owns Metropolitan Detail out in Seattle. I saw they were using this to support while they were building their facility. Uh, they were using this to support their you know, car wash bay and they were using it vertically. And then my friend Billy at uh, Presidential was using his vertically every single day. Um, it's, it's bad for the pump for both heat and oiling. You know, the electric motors back here, the wobble plate is inside this section here and then this is the pump head. It uses water uh, to cool the head. Uh, and so if you have the thing vertically, it still gets some oil because there's basically springed like valved plungers that come this way. And so if the machine is, or, uh, is oriented straight up like this, you know, it doesn't oil properly and doesn't cool properly. So, I mean, these things are built like a tank, so it's, it's probably not the end of the world, uh, but not something you want to mess with. Unloader valve should be set right out of the box. You shouldn't have to mess with this. Um, you also shouldn't have to mess with the oil or anything. Uh, Krenzos, the manual recommends 50 hours, which for most of us, I mean, you know, a, a wash, you're probably washing, this thing is probably only on for a total of 10 minutes. So do the math on that. So that's six times for an hour. So that's six washes <coughs> times 50. So you've got, you know, 300 washes generally before you need to, let's be fair and say 150 washes if you wash longer than, you know, than, than, than 10 minutes of, of run time. Um, you know, you've got, you know, years before you really need to swap it. I think the first time I changed my oil, let's say I got it in 2012, um, I changed it in probably 2017. We can go look up that video. So it was five years of washes before I, um, and you're know, doing an average probably two washes a week with it. But this is the unloader valve. Unloader valve you shouldn't need to mess with. It should be turned all the way out, you know, not in. Let me just see if I got that right. No, should be turned all the way in, not out. But um, you shouldn't need to mess with the unloader. Uh, when you unload, <clears throat> you unload the pressure. Uh, you really are better off adjusting the pressure by using a different size orifice, not messing with the unloader valve. You have your gauge. Uh, this is an oil filled gauge. Uh, this one here appears, appears to be pretty much filled all the way up. So it's a glycerin gauge. If you do see an air bubble, that's normal. Um, you didn't, you know, the gauge isn't broken. That's pretty, pretty normal to have you know, an air bubble inside of here, uh, which is oil, not water. It's glycerin gauge. So the 1122 has its own hose installed, its own hose system here. This is a quarter inch hose or whatever the, you know, the metric equivalent is. And then you have your, your um, uh, nozzle. Uh, always inspect, make sure there's a green, not nozzle, but outlet. Uh, there's a green o-ring on the on the outlet here i don't think this thing comes down because there's a there's a, a rubber stopper on here but there's a green o-ring here this this green o-ring is really the only maintenance issue it's, you know at times um there's a this is a there's a little bit of grease on here 
over time. You know, this is a brass head, brass can still rust. So, um, especially if you have really nasty water, hard water, or if you're doing a lot of deionized water, you'll actually leach some of the brass. It's okay, I mean, you're talking about 50 years of abuse before you have a real issue. Um, but this O-ring, if you ever have water shooting out the bottom here, it's not something underneath. It would be the O-ring is torn and you need to get an O-ring. I think these O-rings, what are they, like a buck 50 or something crazy like that? Because uh, it's a very specific size. So, we got this, we got our power cord, three-prong power cord. Now this machine is designed to operate on 15 amps, but it doesn't work so great on 15 amps. You really want 20. In a perfect world, you'd want dedicated 20. This will work just fine on a 15 amp circuit, as long as you don't have like lights and other things on that same circuit. This will work fine on it with the gun and wand. Um, but when, when you implement or institute the foam cannon, that's when it can become problematic. So let's just stay progression here. So these are the accessories that normally come in the box. We take them out of the box, which adds shipping cost, but these things puncture and smash into the pressure washer. And so um, Krenzla, uh, Krenzla USA has um, recommended that we take the accessories out. They've been shipping these things. And uh, we found it's best to take the, the factory accessories out. Now, for me, I punt these, but for some of you, you know, you may want to keep this. Um, these, these factory, the factory pieces. Um, I never use these, but if you were going to clean a deck or something like that, these will come in handy. So if you're going to use your Krenzla for multiple purposes, I don't, I just use it to wash cars, then having the gun, oh wow, it's different. It's been a, a lot of years since I've opened up one of these, so they've changed quite a bit. Um, so this, this, um, this is the factory gun. And so imagine me back in the day trying to get a foam cannon on the end of this sucker. Uh, and now it's even more complicated, I see, because they changed the fitting style. So getting a foam cannon on this is not probable. I don't think it's possible at all. So we used to sell an accessory, a uh, quick disconnect accessory package for this. Uh, which we don't need any longer. So here's the the handle and the uh, stay for the power cord is in here. So make sure you don't throw that away. The rest is just paper. So look at this sucker. So you got two different nozzles. This is called a dirt killer nozzle. Um, this is a like a Vario nozzle where there's basically a uh, kind of like the um, it's kind of like the tornador for blowing out pads. Um, this thing has a little nozzle in here that spins and it creates essentially more effective cleaning power without any more pressure. Uh, and so this dirt killer nozzle is good if you're cleaning algae off a deck or something like that. And then they've transitioned to their own quick disconnect version here. Uh, but you can see, <laughs> what is that, 40 inches? So that's pretty useful when you're up like this. That's why they have it designed this way. So when you're, you're cleaning the floor, cleaning the concrete, cleaning a deck, cleaning the side of a building, cleaning gutters, things like that, that's where this can come in handy. And then you have the traditional fan nozzle. The nozzle size on this, I don't know if they still have it on here, but it's 4.2, yeah. So it says 4.2. So that's the size of the hole, the orifice on this puppy. Uh, and then this is a fan style where you can adjust the pattern from straight to probably, I think, 60 degrees. Doesn't say. It might be 40 degrees. Uh, but you can see, you know, the functional use, what this thing, I mean, these are made for chicken hatcheries, meat packing plants. They're made for butcher shop, you know, things like that where, you know, high production commercial type applications uh, where it's designed to be used inside, you use as much flow as possible and no emissions. So no, no, you know, no gas or no exhaust. So theoretically, if you're going to use this out of the box, you would then have to take this and this is an M22 fitting. 
This is a 14 millimeter, so the exterior size is M22, the thread pitch is 1.5, and the hole inside of here is 14 millimeters. And so this is designed to mate with this. Uh, and so in the old days, when I first started doing this, I had to screw this on. And when I bought this in 2012, I wanna say, let's see, 2012, I was 32. I was seven years into financial, my financial practice. I was probably making like 120 grand, something like that. Uh, and I had my M3, which was like a, I don't know, $1,100 a month payment or something like that. So this was a pretty big purchase. Uh, and so I wiped this thing down, detail sprayed it, cleaned it every single time I used it. Uh, and so what necessitated the chase for quick disconnects is I was doing this every time, unscrewing it, taking it apart. And the original gun didn't have a quick disconnect here. So you had to unscrew this as well. Uh, and plus to get a foam cannon attached to it, uh, you had, I had to neck down from M22, down to three eighths, down to quarter, trying to find all the parts and pieces. It was really freaking annoying. And so I think it was, you know, so, so 2014 is when I made the first video on this. Uh, and then I was always getting questions. At least once or twice a week, I get an email. Hey, how do I get mine set up with quick disconnects? And that was before I'd even gone to the short gun. I don't know when, I think short gun came in like 2015, uh, is when I maybe, maybe late 2014 when I started doing the short gun, which we're gonna show you here in a second. Uh, but I was answering people's questions, trying to figure out how to, you know, what's the, what's the best way to give people the information because everybody was asking me on how to job, how to family, young family, uh, trying to figure out how to make it in the world. And uh, I built ObsessedGarage.com. It wasn't a retail site, it wasn't a store. It was just a resource site. So I built ObsessedGarage.com to tell my story because everybody was asking me what my, you know, what my background was. And I built ObsessedGarage.com to put the products, specifically this one, because there were links I had to send, you know, a dozen or so links to all different places. Where do you get the pressure washer? Where do you get the fittings? Where do you get the, you know, the inlet hose that I eventually figured out? Where, where, do, where do you get all this stuff? So there's only, only a couple of things to put on here. So we take these two, these are a Phillips. Let me go grab a Phillips screwdriver, put this in place. This is gonna be a fun video, a nice little two hour video. <laughs> we'll get there. Maybe we'll do it a couple of episodes. But in fairness, this is a long story, you know? This pressure washer is, uh, this pressure washer has changed my life, literally. So this goes on the side here. So there's really not a lot of assembly. You just put these two pieces on, you're good to go. And they only take these off because of shipping. We found that these things will break off. And you don't want that to happen to your fancy pressure washer. So this is for the power cord. When we're done, we'll stow it and I'll show you how to wrap it up. But gosh, this feels like yesterday. I don't think I've used one of these for several years. Yeah, because I have the, the on-wall one. But yeah, this sucker has changed my life. There's, uh, there's an inflection point here at some point where you know these were not available anywhere no one was selling them a uh, fillet detailers domain had it on his site uh, but he, he had the, just a stock picture um, they uh, you know they were selling almost none of them you know what would you even do with this thing you know most people wouldn't even know where to get started because this giant wand is not super useful and who the heck is gonna buy a $1,200 pressure washer? That was the argument from everybody, everywhere, in all places. I wanna say, you know, just me alone, who knows how many copiers have copied 
at this point, but just me, we're, we're approaching 10,000 of these sold, of, of all the, the Krenzel pressure washers that I've sold. So I built up sesgarage.com. I wanted to call it that's junk.com is the irony of, you know, I don't do anything that's junk. And so it was a bio page and I made the This Is Me series. And then there was the, uh, the product page where I took photos on my, in my garage on my countertop and I took photos myself. And then um, the, this was the catalyst for that because I had, uh, had all these links all over the place and it was really annoying for me when people were asking me for, um, what do you get? What's up, man? How you doing? People kept asking me for, you know, where do you get this stuff? Where do I buy this stuff? Where's the, um, you know, how do I get the quick disconnects, all of that? And so I got tired of putting links in videos. I didn't have time to do that. And so I put up all, I, I wanted to build a centralized place to put everything all in one spot. It was a freaking disaster because it was a, uh, a, 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 a site that we hosted on DigitalOcean and I had some buddy from church help me make it and then I was doing it on WordPress and the thing crashing all the time it was a freaking disaster. So I uh, eventually was gonna sell some t-shirts in 2017, uh, late 2016. Uh, and so the t-shirts uh, necessitated me to build a store, and so I built Shopify, and so then the WordPress site would link back to Shopify. It was a whole mess. Uh, so the package comes like this. So this, this, these are our accessories. And so this is the six and a half foot hose, which we're not gonna use here. I need a 20 foot hose, so we, I just grab one of these off the shelf. And then this is the gun, so OG gun. What do I just do with my knife? This is a whole other story. So this is my gun that me and Jamie from Osmatic developed. The original gun was the MTM M407. That was the original one. No swivel. Um, at that time, I was just trying to figure out how to put quick disconnects on the thing. Uh, and then I, um, I integrated or put a swivel. And so I had like four or five different adapters to try to convert G type fittings to NPT fittings and from, from, from M22 that was coming off the gun or off of, the, uh, off of this, converting that to 3 8 and then trying to get it all to work was a freaking cluster. Uh, and so at the end of the day, the gun connected to the pressure washer, I had, I think it was seven and a quarter inches of fittings coming off of here. So we had this piece, this plastic piece, and seven inches of fittings just to make it so that it would swivel. Because I found, you know, this hose is not super pliable, uh, and so it would get all bound up. Uh, and yet I was trying to send people links to all this stuff. It was really annoying. Because I'd send people the links, and then that still didn't get people off my back. They just kept asking for, you know, which was great, but they kept asking for more information, more information, more information. How can I figure out how to, um, how can I figure out how to, how to get these parts and pieces or they wouldn't be in stock at this weird pressure washing supply. Uh, and so that's when I decided, you know what, what if I just bought all this stuff, bought a bunch of them, like 15 of them or so, and uh, what if I just built my own package and, just, and then sold it on the site that I'd built for t-shirts. So that was, that was late, late 2016. It took me six or so months I think it was late summer when I started asking and everybody said, you know, and all the companies in MTM and for Krenzla, they were all telling me, no, absolutely not. You know, you, we can't, you, you're not a, you know, garage is detailing, no one's gonna buy this thing. And then, you know, eventually I convinced MTM, used MTM to convince Mosmatic. Mosmatic tried to talk me out of the original purple gun. Um, they said, you don't want that, you don't want a swivel. I said, yes, I do. So I paid a few hundred dollars to have it shipped over from Switzerland and then I launched, uh, I launched the 13 videos on the website, on, on the YouTube channel when I lost uh, 5,000 subscribers, you know, because people had thought I'd junked the shark. Uh, and the uh, rest is history because we've sold you know, thousands of these things. So this is the fitting. This baby, this little puppy here is the magic. This is what mates everything together. This is what gets rid of 
all of the adapters and all the fittings. I mean, this is only maybe a year and a half into getting rid of, we had to have a, a twist and seal plug, so we had two adapters that became one. This type of fitting didn't exist in stainless. Uh, there were a few companies that made it in brass, but it was junk. Uh, and so this is a Swiss made 5000 PSI T304 stainless uh, Mosmatic fitting uh, that mates directly to the outlet. Um, this is, I think, iteration number six. I wanted to get the proper height, you know, the proper thread pitch, the proper setup. Um, and so I have several prototypes in my office, but we wanted it so there was a slight gap so that you could get it tight. This is M22, so you don't need any tape on this fitting here. Um, but this, for many, many years, was a myriad of fittings to get down to this one piece. And then here's the beauty of this. The swivel on the OG spec version of the Ultimate Package, the swivel is integrated up into the handle of the gun. Uh, and so there's no need for, for bulk. There's no extra plug. The plug is integrated. Uh, these are designed to work specifically together. Uh, we have less O-ring issues, uh, but this is a $50 part. You know, this, this little piece here is 50 bucks. It's not mass produced. They're produced in small volumes, uh, small allotments, and um, I wish that I would have made my own and patented it because I've seen them in some other places across the world. But see, the magic of this now is that I don't get any binding. So my hose has the ability to wind or unwind as necessary. And then we don't have this, all this unnecessary bulk. It makes it so much, seem, so much simpler, so much more seamless. So then on the outlet of the gun is a, is a quarter inch type fitting. Uh, and notice, you know, I, I toyed with the idea of doing, um, of doing this in a equal length thread so that way it wouldn't stick out like this. The problem is, is this fitting is still necessary for other, other guns and other, th other uses. Uh, and so I wanted to keep the gun NPT and not change to some sort of proprietary fitting uh, and end up with an issue where you couldn't, like if these fittings weren't available, that you couldn't get it. I think this is a $45 fitting. Uh, what we found is that these, you know, versus the, you know, the Chinese ones that we do in our non-OG spec package, uh, these Swiss made fittings, they cost, you know, about four times, five times as much. I don't know how much long they last. We've only had them for a year or so, but we find that they fail much, much less often. But keep in mind, these are wear and tear. These are not like, you know, 10 year warranty items. I think Mosmatic warranties them for six months. Um, but these are items that, uh, that you replace periodically. Now, we provide you a couple of O-rings, so don't throw these away. Put these in your top drawer somewhere. There's a 3 8 inch O-ring for this piece here, and there's a quarter inch O-ring for this piece here. Um, so we have a couple of extra O-rings. If you ever find that there's water, if there's water dripping out the bottom, it's the O-ring inside. If water is shooting out the gun here, it's the O-ring in the fitting here, in the coupler. Uh, if the water is shooting out of here, out of your nozzle or out of your wand, then it's the O-ring there. Uh, and the bearings will wear out over time, especially if you use this thing a lot, if you're using it professionally. I would highly suggest you buy two of these, two of these, and maybe a half a dozen of each of these. Go to the OG store, go to the separate subsection where we have all the parts and pieces, uh, and just have them in your cabinet. You know, you'll spend 200 bucks to have these. If, if you're a professional, you should be a professional. Don't be a frickin' baby. Buy them, have them. That way, you know, in a year or two, you know, when you need them, or if it was two months down the road, you don't want to be out, out your machine. Uh, because this will not connect to this any other way. Uh, you'd have to go back to the goofy uh, stock gun. So then we have the wand, and the wand has evolved as well. So this is the OG spec wand. It's funny now. I see everybody has this uh, has this design, but this was this wasn't even my idea. This was Jamie's uh, brainchild from Mosmatic. Um, I wanted the wand to have an integrated plug on the inlet. Uh, my dad and the guys here at HQ and Ted they've built thousands and thousands of these. Where what we had done originally is the Mosmatic gun, just pretend this, or the Mosmatic wand, pretend this fitting wasn't here. So the Mosmatic wand looked like this, and then it had a female connection on it. Uh, and so what we had to do um, was we had to take the nozzle tip off, put one of these quarter inch quick disconnects on. Uh, actually, no, I take it back. We had to take the nozzle tip and pull it past the nut, which means they had to, we had to heat them up, 
and we had to put some soap on them. And then my dad got really good, and Ted got really good, where they could just pop it, uh, pop it back, and then pull it back over. Uh, but the problem is the quick disconnect stuck out like you know, maybe half an inch, so it kind of defeated the purpose of this protection point. And so Jamie said, you know, in the pressure washing world, it's common where they'll integrate the nozzle into the protector. Uh, I mean, that's really what it was designed to do was to um, was to have the nozzle inside of there. And so why don't we take the quick disconnect, the coupling section, we'll do a fixed nozzle, put the plug on the on the end of the assembly, and then just put a a quarter inch quick disconnect on the end of the wand. Uh, and so we were able to custom make this and then integrate the plug so that it's one piece. So this comes like so. 20 inches, I think, is the best length for washing cars. Um, this, this I ordered, not this version, the original version I ordered by accident. I thought I was ordering something else and I got really lucky that I'd ordered the right fittings. For, for several years, all these people were trying to, you know, circumvent the system uh, and they'd always buy the wrong size because there's like, there's like 120 different variants of this on Mosmetic site, different combinations that you could put together. Uh, and so this puppy here is a, a bit of divine intervention, a bit of luck, uh, a bit of, um, you know, I was just buying stuff to try out. I think I'd order it from like Doltmeyer or some professional supplier or something that I had to pull teeth to try to find um, but the quick disconnected OG spec gun wand combination on this sucker has taken many years many hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of mistakes and now it looks like this so now this is set up for washing cars yours truly I didn't invent this any of these parts but this is my idea. This is my idea from the beginning. So anywhere you see this, they should be, um, they should be bowing to the king because this is my frickin' deal. <laughs> I'm sure that'll make some people mad. But you know, short guns were used in pressure washing, but very, very uncommonly. Uh, and same thing with swivels. Swivels are used, but they were not recommended. Quick disconnects were not recommended. You know, if the quick disconnect isn't proper, it can cause cavitation, can blow up your pump. Um, so there's some risks involved using quick disconnects. But the magic of this setup and this system is that I can break down. Uh, and once I went to the short gun, it alleviated the need to have a garden hose uh, because now I could wash my wheels without having some big, long 40 inch you know, gun. I can sit on a stool like this and wash it. So that's the, that's the uh, gun and wand setup. So we provide two different nozzles in the box. Um, these are actually MTM nozzles. Um, they could be MTM or Mosmatic. Um, generally, we have you know, MTM nozzle, nozzles that are a little easier to get, uh, but we have a 15 degree and a 40 degree. And with this pressure washer, this thing has gotten a little beefier over the years. Um, we found that a lot of people were tripping breakers with a 4.0 nozzle. Um, and so because the stock recommended is 4.2, I'd always rounded down and gone to 4.0. Um, but at some point, they did something to the windings, the capacitor. Uh, so these puppies actually have a little more output than my original machines, uh, the original ones that we were selling. And so we've gone up to a 4.5. It's just safer. If you have dedicated 20 amp, you could probably purchase yourself a 4.0, get a little bit more juice out of the machine. Uh, you'll get a little less flow, but a little more pressure. Uh, this thing, the target of choosing this size nozzle, the target is around 1,000 PSI. These will do you know, 900 to 1,050 PSI. And we're gonna get somewhere around two gallons a minute you know, in the real world if we held the stopwatch and put it in a bucket. Uh, and so the magic of this puppy is, um, is its flow the other magic is it's completely rebuildable. So every part and piece of this could be taken apart and replaced, unlike the sealed units that you buy when you buy the, you know, the Chinese stuff. Also in the box, which we'll set up here in a second, a couple of quick disconnects. These are for the hose, uh, and these are the stainless version. I think we've pretty much done away with the brass concept. These are not 304. These are probably like T316L. Uh, Mosmetic doesn't make these for me. These are Velocy, so these are, um, these are MTM. Um, these are you know, made in China and brought over here in bulk. Uh, they're nice, uh, but these, you'll probably have to replace these more often um, than those. Uh, but remember, wear and tear item. And I'll show you how to install these in a minute here when we, when we get through this. Last thing in the box. So really, we've gotten this quite simplified, just a few items in each box. Uh, last item is a PF22.2 foam cannon, which comes like this. 
Uh, this is the MTM version. Take your straw, put it in place. We, t we open these up. We tape and torque. So we put a Mossmatic quarter inch male plug, male threaded, all plugs are male, but if it's female, it would have female threads. If it's male, this is a male, uh, male um, a plug. And then good job, they line up the flats for me. Close. Might have to give Ted and Andrew a little, oh, and actually there's no, this is a uh, curated doing this for me now. Might have to give my dad and Justin a hard time. That's about a, a 15th of a turn off and perfectly flat, but generally the flats will be pretty lined up. We you know, sell so many of these that you have to kind of crank through them. And so this is pre-installed. We take the, uh, I think we take the orifice out. Oh no, we do leave it in here. So this in here, this is a 1.1 millimeter orifice. So don't mess with this. In fact, throw it away. If you mess with this, you're gonna mess with the longevity of your pump. So in here is pre-installed. So behind this plug, there's a little nozzle inside of there and that's the hole, the hole is a certain size. And so all that stuff is calibrated. You know, when I started doing this, I didn't know any of this stuff. Nobody did other than like professional, you know, professional pressure washing industry people. Um, and so we've kind of brought this mainstream and taught people how to do this. And so now we have our, you know, a, a system that is super simple, super, um, capable and will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. Unless you just have really bad luck. But just listen to the, this is why you pay the extra for the ultimate package. It's just a different connection. It's a different quality connection. The tolerances are much tighter. Um, it is a much, much more um, stout solution. Uh, all the fittings are better. Uh, make sure you turn your knob all the way. Uh, part of our partnership with MTM was to get a suggestion for them to start using a stainless bolt on here. Um, and so I've had the fortunate ability to have a lot of influence. Like I've you know, had some say in this bottle and how it's made and had a lot of influence on this part of the world um, that has you know, changed how we wash cars over the, over, the, over the years. Very different than using a garden hose. So let's get our garden hose inlet hose set up. So in the very beginning, uh, the only company I could find that was making a short hose, uh, a whip hose, was Ely. And so I had become really good friends with the, um, you know, the main uh, purchasing manager, uh, or I forget what his title was with Ely. But Ely makes the best garden hose reel in the world. In the world. And eventually what had happened is Ely was having issues trying to get things produced. Uh, and so they pulled back all production. Uh, and so I, Ely had a six and a half foot and 12 foot hose that we were able to use. It was a poly hose, which I don't like polypropylene hoses. They, they tend to get all jacked up uh, and uh, they tend to kink a little bit more. Um, a poly hose for a garden hose is terrible because it doesn't wind up very well uh, and it, because it tends to stick to itself. Uh, and so this rubber hose that I had found, you know, Adams Polishes had a rubber hose, it was red. Uh, they had a rubber hose from, it was a Continental Frontier uh, and Adams stopped selling it very shortly after they originally sold it. And again, it was like 200 and something, almost $300 for a garden hose. Now they didn't have any sort of whip hose or any shorter one. And then eventually I found some weird HTML site when Adams stopped selling and I found an HTML site to get my own garden hose and I was just referring people to it. Uh, and then eventually uh, I got smart and I found the original manufacturer, the guy who was putting these together. Uh, and so these, um, the, 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 was putting together the, the assemblies and I had to make me a new whip hose because we didn't have hoses when Ely decided they were gonna only sell direct, they weren't gonna sell to distributors. And so I was, I'd set out, well, can I get that Continental Frontier hose to be our inlet hose? And so we've had this for a number of years. Um, I think we make this ourselves now. So we buy this, my dad's making this up at Curated, uh, my other business that I'm building, wholesale business. Uh, and so we make it six and a half, 12, 20, 35, 50, 75, and 100 feet. Uh, and so we make this in different, different sizes. We've got a new hose that I've got coming out at some point if with supply chain ever gets fixed but a new hose that's even better than this one coming out at some point. But the one thing I found out is that if you buy a lot of hoses, like I think, what do we sell our garden hose for? Like 150 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that, not 275 or whatever that Adams had to sell it back in the day because they were probably not doing a lot of them. 
So these, when you're doing garden hose fittings, you don't need tape unless you've got you know a lot of leaking. You could use tape if you needed to. So really, you, you shouldn't need to Teflon tape this at all. Uh, we used to send a roll of Teflon tape in the box, but you don't need it anymore. So these are O-ring type. These are um, soft O-ring type fittings. Uh, and so when you're when you're when you're installing your plugs, um, you really shouldn't have to get out. And we'll see. You should be able to hand tighten it. So go as tight as you can get with your bare hand. That should be enough. If you got baby hands, maybe you need to go get a set of vice grips or channel locks or something like that. But that should be all you need to tighten. And then on the other end, same thing. There's an O-ring here. If you go too tight, especially on this one, even hand tighten, you can go too tight. But if you go too tight, you'll crush the O-ring and you'll warp it. And uh, your quick disconnect won't work very well. And, um, and then you'll have water squirting all over the place. So don't go too tight on that. But there's two sets of these. One for the inlet hose. And just know they come in the box together, so don't freak out. They come apart. And one for the outlet of the pressure washer. Let me turn this around so you can see it. So the outlet goes here. There's an O-ring on there. So again, we shouldn't need any tape. You know, at some point in the chain, the main reason why, you know, you probably should be using brass fittings here. The main reason why we're using stainless is this brass is much higher quality than the quick disconnect brass. Uh, and so it just turns green and gets real ugly looking. So I made the choice to just go stainless. We'll use the stainless fittings. And then this piece here, I'm gonna screw onto my hose bib. So I always take off the back flow, back flow. You know, I'm breaking the rules, we take off the back flow so I get maximum flow to my pressure washer on my hose bib. And so I've got a crappy one out here, I'm gonna screw that on. We'll save that for when we, when we hook it up. And so there's our system. And so what I would generally do is take this guy, I'm gonna take my nozzle, I'm gonna line this up. I would normally take the time, but you know, this, this then I'll holster right here. But generally speaking, you know, I, I think this is good practice. You could leave it like this, but generally speaking, I'm going to uh, break this thing down after every use. Especially if you're gonna make, you know, if you're making a huge investment in this thing, I would, we'll show you how to break it down at the end, but I would keep it I would disconnect the inlet hose, I would disconnect the gun and wand, dump the water out, keep things looking pretty. Always take stickers off like this. We got ourselves a nice looking setup. And somehow I got a blood hand already, as usual. Anytime I kind of do any, any real man work, I'm always bleeding. It's that baby soft skin I got. So these guys will go back in the box. If you're not chatting and telling your life story, you could have this thing out of the box, ready to go, wash your car in 10 minutes, as quick as you can open a box. So we'll set this aside. And gosh, I'm bleeding everywhere. I didn't even cut myself with my fancy knife. Let me put this stuff away and let's wash a car. All right, let's get this puppy set up. So I'm gonna put this on the hose bib out here, which is right here. This is, I don't have to do this very often now because of the custom install solution, but you know, this is, you know, this is where it all began, setting up your system. And uh, not, I don't have a bucket filler in here in the garage yet. Uh, we're gonna be installing the KWS 700. So I've got a really simple setup here that I'm gonna use the, you know, the, the 1122 with. So we have our plug, take the plug, put it in place. And so what I'd done all these years is before I had a bucket filler and, and when I transitioned away from using a garden hose is we would fill up, fill up my buckets first. Uh, and so I'm gonna get my soaps ready and we'll fill it up here then I'll turn it off and then connect our pressure washer. But remember, you're gonna lay your pressure washer down and because it has a 50 foot hose, I can actually stick my pressure washer in a strategic place usually like front middle of the car. And uh, actually do it like this. And that way I can reach both sides of the car. 
keep my power cord somewhat managed. I got on a 20 amp circuit here. This isn't dedicated, but it is a 20. I'm gonna plug my air compressor for now. And we will leave the GFCI off until I get everything set up. So then this, I'll take this out and do my wheels first. So I'm gonna take this off. I usually take this and throw it in my wheel bucket. Gosh, this brings back so many memories, man. My process is still with me, Mike. The old Maddie process is still here, still alive and well. So having a swivel means I can keep my hose from getting all bound up. Take this, set that there. Let me get some soap from my foam cannon. And we're ready to go. Man, this is, this is a, uh, this is crazy. This feels weird. And uh, I probably should mention, the, so the, the M2, we're doing a giveaway on. So go to obsessedgarage.com. You can't buy a pressure washer. Not enough profit in a pressure washer, believe it or not. Um, to, and I sell these anyway. So you can go to, go to the page on the site and uh, M2 is gonna be given away here in um, about a month. So make sure to check that out. Buy some stuff and buy a pressure washer. So this is the new, uh, I forget what they call this thing, but this is the new super soft pad for Microfiber Madness. This is the prototype, so we're gonna test it out. They've been waiting on me to give them feedback on this, so we'll see how it is. And then soap, soap has evolved over the years. I used to use uh, Adams soap. This is a uh, Kosh Kemi GSF. And uh, I don't have my fancy funnel here, so we're gonna have to just pour it in like this, 150 milliliters. And because of the size of this car, I'm gonna do, um, we'll do 650 milliliters, milliliters of water, or 600 milliliters of water for 750 milliliters total. And then, because I'm a lot richer now than I was when I was washing cars back in the day, I use a lot more soap than I used to, because I can. So we got this ready, our bucket's ready. Fill them up. What I used to do, I had the garden hose nozzle, or uh, no, fire hose nozzle, like an old Dixon valve one from Griot's Garage that I would put on the end of this just to fill up the buckets. That was real annoying. And then if I was gonna use the deionizer, I'd have to break this all down. Now, of course, if you're watching this the first time, uh, I have a uh, custom install solution where um, you can put this all on the wall and not have to break any of this down. But for those of you, you know, that are doing well, just starting out, you're on your first, second home, this is such a great option. You don't have a wall, you don't have a relationship with a plumber or not used to hiring people. See, back in the day when I was doing this, I, I didn't hire anybody to do anything. I did everything myself. So, normally what I do is I wait to fill up the, uh, when I, since I have a bucket filler, I would wait to fill up my soap bucket because by the time I get around to this thing, the, all the suds are gonna be toast. So I'll show you what we'll do about that. But because I only want to break it down once, we'll do it this way. And then what I always do is the old kinkaroo. Actually, when I was really good, this is what we'd do. So I didn't have to turn it off. Connect it. Boom. And we're set up. Fills a pressure washer before I kick it on. Let's let the air out. Good practice, especially when it's new. And I could have never have imagined, you know, this is our fifth giveaway car that I would be in this building with a bunch of employees doing all kinds of cool stuff. Like if you would have told me back in the day, like if you would have told me 
in 2014 when I started making videos, like if I could have if I could have sat down at a computer and like written a story like to perfection, I wouldn't have predicted any of this. It's pretty incredible. It's been a been a crazy ride. All right, so we turn it on. We got to get our GFCI. I just turned it off. Now turn it on. Instantly, now that it's pressure, the pressure switch is this black box right here. And so we'll reach full pressure, let go. Now, this gauge here is kind of dumb. Um, it's more for maintenance purposes for professional applications. Um, it really doesn't tell you what the pressure is out, 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 out here at the nozzle. It's telling you the head pressure, the, head, the pressure on the head of the pump, which doesn't really help you very much. All right, let me get my fancy stool. Remember those of you guys who have been around here since the beginning? Remember the old craftsman stool? Well, this is a little bit fancier now. This is a big time uh, old school OG video here. This is awesome. All right, so I take my bucket. How many times have I done this since the first video on camera? I wonder if it's been a, at least 500 times, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I mean, there's got to be, I've done this at least 500 times on camera, times an average of an hour. So there's 500 hours of me sitting here with a pressure, with a Krenzel pressure washer doing just this. So these are carbon ceramics coated. So normal maintenance wash. The key with carbon ceramics is get the carbon ceramic dust out of it. And yeah, the car is dirty. I drove in the rain. So, but my level of dirty, not yours. We call it Florida dirty. Just because you're dirtier than I am doesn't make you better than me. Over the years, I've had to fight that quite a bit. Your car's not even dirty. So these have the dicey, learn my lesson. Can't really clean this very well without getting stuck on the dust shield. If the dust shield didn't have anything to do with cooling, I'd be ripping that sucker off. This is brake buster. We do have some detailing stuff. Some various detailing packages that are part of the giveaway that you could buy as well. So, I need my lambskin mitt, which I haven't used in a while over here, so it's going to be a little, a little hard. Just need to get some water in it. Shoot, I was going to sneak in and chop this oak tree down, but it's actually not a bad washing spot. I think this is the first wash at the yarn building ever. Be putting the KWS 700 in here. So, because these are coated in carbon ceramics, I don't really need Brake Buster, but it foams so darn well, it makes it easy to clean that I don't, I usually just use it anyway. Yeah, so the, the transition, this has been a really scary transition to, you know, we sell hundreds of these pressure washers a month. And so, you know, I need to build inventory of them. And so to make this transition to it has been a bit scary. It was a lot of money. Buying, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of pressure washers at a time is scary as heck. I mean, it's just the perfect going on here don't do that by the way this is part of the game here people water under pressure I don't care how much money we've spent how much vetting we've done water under pressure is a is a an endless battle 
So if you got a little drip, that means I probably need to tighten this up a bit. Let me go fix that. So I took the fitting off, put a little Teflon tape on there. Let's see if that gets it. Bingo. So that's a good segue, a good discussion to have. Look, you know, this is a, I think, what is this, like a $1,900, $2,000 package now, something like that. It's an insane amount of money. And so an insane amount of money oftentimes, you know, would, would come attached to it with some, you know, entitlement. Like I'm getting you like 99.7% of the way there. Right there, right out of the box, we, we, um, we had actually done some thread sealer. Uh, my dad put, put thread sealers, torqued it, and it still had a slight leak. Um, and you have to work for this. I mean, there's water under pressure. So you may have a leak at your hose bib, or you may have a leak somewhere, you know, from the, maybe on one of the fittings on the pressure washer from getting shipped. Um, when there's water under pressure, you have to work for it. I can only get you so far. I'm not there to babysit you. And to be honest, we've had such great humans buying stuff from us, but occasionally we get some dork who has, you know, is not recognizing what's happening here. Like we're not some like big giant corporation. It's like me and my friends and my, you know, they've become my employees in the garage putting together things that didn't exist. So just be aware of that when you're getting all bent out of shape that you have to work for water under pressure. It's not, it's not, uh, we can't be there with you when you're doing it. And even out of the box, no matter how many precautions and how much precision we take, sometimes it just, you don't know, things happen. So this is undiluted brake buster. It gets diluted when you apply, you know, with the foam cannon, so. Easy detail brush, since we're going back to the basics here. This is one of the originals too, the easy details, an original, from my original arsenal. Tried wheel woolies and all the other things and I just keep coming, I keep kept coming back to this guy. I love it. I've seen people do reviews. Speedmaster, which is the red one, versus this one. I'm like, you freaking idiot, it's the same thing. It just runs red and one's blue. And you know, easy detail guys make it for Speedmaster. <laughs> oh, I think I've determined that the Speedmaster is uh, better than the easy detail. Uh, dude, it's the same thing. One's just red. It's been a lot of weird stuff over the years. That that I've witnessed. Everybody remember, whatever happened to that guy, the junk man? He was like the original. It was, it was Larry Cosella, little ammo NYC, chemical guys, and the junk man. They were the detailers on YouTube. They were the guys. The weird thing is I hadn't really watched any of them. I don't even know where the, the detailing process largely came from Detailer's Domain, um, from watching or reading um, the forum post, the detailing section on, uh, on M3, M3 post. That and the Grios Garage catalog. I didn't really, I never participated in detailing forums. I don't know why. I was never on any of them. I never watched videos because videos weren't really a thing. It was all... The the car forums and Grio's Garage when I first started. And then a lot of the detailing, um, I, I say, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of forum taught, but largely self-taught from trial and error, and then professionally verified. I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, what would I say? Someone asked me. So largely self-taught, but f but verified by professionals. So after I'd kind of already developed the process, you know, I'd already been detailing for 10 years or so, um, um, maybe paint correcting for two or three years, something like that. Kind of 
kind of figured a lot of it out from trial and error. Uh, and then I'd gone to, I went to Mike Phillips training at Auto Geek. So I, I kind of just sat back. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't just wanted to take it all in and learn, you know, figure out what was I missing. So it was a big confirmation there. And I'd pick up a few things. Like I credit the Mike Phillips detailing training. The coolest thing I learned so I confirmed what I was doing, but the coolest thing I learned was uh, how to wrap a power cord on a polisher, which people don't think is a good idea, but I've been doing it forever. And then, you know, I've gone to train with Jason Rose, train with uh, Todd Cooperwriter at Esoteric, doing the Esoteric uh, Elite Detailing Academy. That was super cool. Um, but any all the trainings I've gone to, just keep my mouth shut and just take it all in. And so a lot of it, you know, is a confirmation. And because I keep my mouth shut, a lot of those guys probably claim, or disclaim me, but a lot of them probably claim I learned everything from them because I would just take it in, be coachable, be teachable. I do the same thing with my business coaching and all that. Keep my mouth shut, take it in. Like I was riding, uh, I was riding in the car at the GT Smokies event with a, you know, with a C-suite executive from a major corporation. He was driving, and I was just riding shotgun, just taking it all in. And what am I gonna, I'm not gonna tell him what I know. I'd love, rather learn what he knows. So speaking of that, early on when I, you know, I first started doing some pressure washers and I'd made the comment, I'm like, you know, what if I sold like 50 of these things? That'd be amazing. And Rick, my coach, said, what if you sold 5,000? And I just couldn't even fathom, like, no way. That's crazy. Like, this is just a little thing. No one's gonna buy these things. It's too much money. I'm the only one that would, you know, there's only a few rich people that would do this. And then, of course, I, after that comment, I, I know I spent a lot of time pondering it. And I just stuck with it and said, you know what? If I want this, there's other people that would too. And there's probably a lot more than I think. And to be honest, I think we're just scratching the surface. I don't even think we've reached a fraction of the audience that we're gonna reach over time. And you know, it is frustrating. There are lots of, lots of other retailers, lots of other copiers um, that you know, don't have a lot of original thoughts, but they, you know, they're good at copying stuff. Um, none of them really matter. I used to spend a lot of energy. You've seen me in videos talking about it. I spend a lot of time and energy worrying about that kind of crap. There's nothing I can do about it other than to just keep moving faster. Move fast. Eventually, when I have the resources and we've developed the talent, um, we'll, you know, we'll take manufacturing of products. So right now I'm in the phase of finding the best products um, that exist. Uh, and then if I see an opportunity for improvement, um, then make either exclusive or contract manufacture myself. Like we're working on that with deionization now. Where I'm gonna make a deionizer to change deionizing, to, to evolve it to the next level. So rather than give my ideas away, like I've done with several other things, other, several other product developments, rather than give the idea away, just own it. Patent it. Kind of at a weird angle here, but you want to get more agitation than I'm getting, but the tires are pretty clean. I'm telling you though, you know, having Anybody using an AR is only using an AR because they have to. I mean, the AR is great, it's fine, but this is just so much better. It'd be like, it'd be like saying this, I mean, I have this versus a GT3. You know, you only have this because you have to have this. You would want a GT3. You know, maybe you don't like the look of a GT3 or something like that, but I mean, this is the pressure washer. This is the one. This is the, this is the one to get, no question. And I sell them all. Actually, I only sell the ones that I like enough to sell. That took a lot, a lot of convincing me personally to uh, convince myself that, you know, to sell some other pressure washers. 
knowing that there needs to be a progression. You know, to get this, you know, two thousand dollar package is not practical for most people. Yeah, I never really. And this is the first time I ever thought about that. How many hours of me doing this on camera? Not in, not in life, but on camera, have I done this? It's pretty, God, it's a staggering amount of time. Come on. Hang it. I need to fill it up. Where's the, where's the... So, you know, when I see comments of people saying, you know, there's guys getting rich. Well, I should get rich for the amount of freaking time and effort I put into this stuff. Gosh, I mean, it's an insane amount of work has gone into building what I've built to this, this point. Not just by me now, but by a whole small army of talented people. It's been an incredible ride. And so I will, I will never apologize for that can say whatever they want, lose them, lose, lose everything they ever done, just continue to be a loser forever, I'm going to keep chasing. And I think about the Helen house and how freaking awesome that place is and just think about the, just the amount of work I've had to put into it now, the amount of work to be able to get it and then the amount of work to be able to set it up to put it into service is just incredible. But it's hard for to fathom because I'm having a frickin' blast. I'm like, not really working. Doesn't feel like work. And if I could wish anything for all of you is that you could figure out something that you're destined to do, like I have. I'd say to Michelle, and I was at Merrill Lynch, I'm like, I'm a financial advisor, I'm doing okay at it, you know, I'm doing pretty well. I felt like I was destined for something, something great. I just didn't know what it could be. The hard part is now, you know, hindsight being useful to me now, like, again, I couldn't replicate this. I couldn't recreate this if I tried. So, man, I think you just gotta, I don't know how I would give anybody advice to do it. Because I don't think I, could have, I couldn't have created it. So the, it is at the second renter, to so the second borrower of Helen, the very second guy there had his wheels off, right? He had his wheels off there, you know, was polishing some stuff, coding some stuff, was using a bunch of tools. And uh, what, was, what was my quote comment? I said, um, no one wants, it wasn't my quote, but other people's, no one wants to use tools or wash their car on vacation, quote. And tag, tag the internet. Freaking idiots. I know it. I, I know people that would want to do, experience that house the way that we've set it up. I just knew it. So I'm going to keep staying with that formula. One of these times I'm going to be wrong and lose a bunch of money. But generally speaking, trust the gut. That's good practice. Always start the, start the thing away from the car so you don't shoot it off accidentally. The other thing that's a smart thing to do, make a, um, get like a paint marker and make a line where the thing is straight and it'll be a little easier for you to line up. And we'll rinse it. I didn't think this would become a trip down memory lane here, but apparently that's what it's becoming. That was the big epiphany for me, you know, uh, you know, coming up on you know eight years ago, nine years ago, was I don't write anything down. I don't even think about what I'm gonna say. I just start talking. Even on some of our highly produced stuff, very rarely do we have to cut. So my, 
-hmm. One discovery when I started making videos was that I could just sit in front of the camera and not think about it and just talk. And then I think the other unique value proposition like this weekend, I, um, I was on my third round of uh, re uh, doing sh shopping, which some would call research, but shopping for pots and pans. I'd probably spent a dozen hours trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I finally pulled the trigger on utensils and pots and pans for my kitchen. And that's what, that's what all this stuff here at Best Garage, that's where it all came from. Just searching for cool stuff. And then as the reach has gotten bigger over the years, I have to credit a good percentage of the products to people making suggestions on things. You know, hey, you should consider this product for the store or that product. So we'll just take the foam cannon, or the, not the foam cannon, the wand. Get our suds going again. I used to always stick my finger in here like this. Now we have a quick disconnect with a cap. Take, quick disconnect, all T304 stainless. You won't have any issues with getting water all over this stuff. Turn our foam cannon all the way up. Flip the nozzle vertical. Foam the car. Paint the car. Don't run around it like a crazy person. Take your time. Paint it nice and evenly. See the swivel working? Gosh, before a swivel, you'd be fighting this hose the whole time. I think it's actually a pretty decent wash spot right here. Who needs a wash bay? This is a darn good looking car. Too bad that I hate the engine. So what do I do here, M2 bros? I've got active equal length mid pipe with resonators, and I think that might be the issue. I've got Acra exhaust, and it freaking sounds terrible. Drone crazy. Do I need to get rid of the resonators? Is that the problem? Because I think most people do non-resonated when you could leave the downpipes. Just kind of I find it hard to believe that the uh, that the resonators would cause all that drone, but maybe. So this is the new Car Pro. I don't love the pad that he put on the inside of this. It feels kind of cardboardy. It's my first time using it. So the hope is that, and I, th I think that hope is a bit of a pipe dream, but that we actually have Krenzels in stock. Coming to Canada. We're gonna come to the UK. We're gonna come to the EU. We're gonna eventually come to Australia and who knows where else. But I'm gonna have distribution facilities all over the world. And we're gonna continue to chase this thing. Then the plan would be to have destination homes near near those facilities so that I can go to them. There's just so much possibility. Who's gonna stop me? Guess it's no longer me, it's us. Who's gonna stop us? Who's gonna stop me from making 500 more videos of uh, me washing clean cars? Who the heck wants to wash a dirty car? That's stupid. I'm the king of washing clean cars.
I don't know, Waba. I'm thinking about, you know what I'm thinking about. You, you, did you hear about it? Hear about my plan? E36 giveaway in January. <laughs> We're thinking about doing a ultraviolet, technoviolet, E36 giveaway extravaganza. First quarter next year. <laughs> that one's gonna raise all kinds of monies. I'm gonna directly take that money for a 997 GD3 RS. It's been uh been toyed with. The idea has been thrown out there. What do you guys think? E36 giveaway? I like it when people think of I'm doing frauds. I literally could not be any more straightforward up front. Still have my uh What's that dude's name? My boy Leo Ross still making fake profiles. He's trying to get me. You can't get someone that can't be got. They're not doing anything but perfect. Do the right thing. You'll be rewarded. That's my motto. Thing's pretty dirty, look at that. Lots of dirt. Normally I would roll the buckets out here, but kind of got a good thing going. Yeah, I don't love the, the internal of this pad. That's hurricane dirt right there. Uh-oh, hear that surge? That means I've got a leak somewhere. Pressure washer only surges if there's an air leak somewhere, either internally or externally. In my case, it's very likely from the hose bib here, if there was any kind of leak. I'm telling you. Just because you spend a lot of money, the water's still under pressure. You've got to put in the time if you want it to be perfect. It's not an easy thing. All right, last little section here. We got us a nice clean M2. All right, let's break this sucker down. Show you how I do that. Okay, like I was saying before, I mean, this is a pretty, pretty beautiful piece of German engineering. You know what just dawned on me? I never thought of this. You know, I've been comparing this to a 911 for years. You know, this is a radial axial pump, uh, which is an inferior design to like a triplex pump. Uh, and yet, you know, kind of like the 911, the engine's behind the rear axle. It's a inferior design and yet they continue to perfect it, perfect it, perfect it. So some of that imperfection is what makes it so great. Same thing with this. This is like the perfecting of a radial axial pump. I never really made that correlation and I just thought of when I was uh, finishing rinsing. Uh, so first thing to do when you're gonna break this thing down, just turn the water off. I unplug it. But you could just turn the, turn the switch off as well. So unplug it, turn the switch off. Now I'm gonna let the water out. I've got a, a beater towel here, a multi-purpose towel that I use for cleaning countertops and stuff. Let the water out, disconnect. I'm gonna take this, let the water out of that. 
I'll just make sure all my water's out. Just set this aside. Uh, another thing I, I'll say this, but I forgot to mention, uh, if you leave this soap in here, especially a pH neutral soap, the soap is gonna be useless. So I should have dumped it in the wash bucket. Uh, but this soap, I don't leave it in the foam can, it'll be a waste. The soap, the pH neutral, the surfactants inside of the soap will attack the water, any kind of impurities in the water, and it won't foam. So that's why I always dump the extra soap into the wash bucket, which I forgot to do. Okay, we disconnect. Disconnect my inlet hose. Wind this up nicely. Disconnect it. Quick disconnect it from the wall out here. I'm gonna get as much of the water out of that as possible. Line this back up. The 20 foot hose is a little bit more to deal with. So the 20 footer, I disconnect. The six and a half footer, I generally would leave attached or just kind of detach it and hang it up on the pressure washer. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just take, see if I can remember how I've done this. Dump the water out and take and wrap the sucker up. I don't quite remember the best way to route this. I remember I'd spent a lot of time trying to figure out and, and wrapping this thing up a bunch of different ways. What's the way to get the GFCI to hang the way I liked? I don't remember exactly the way that was but you'll figure it out. You'll see in a second when it doesn't hang properly. This is a pretty stout power cord that over time it'll lose its memory and it'll start to memorize the, you know, the carrying of the pressure washer. It'll gain some pliability over time. Oh, that's okay. Not terrible. You also have this little extra that you could use to wrap around, but I never like to use that. And then this, what we'll do, let me pull this in here and it's for you guys. Try to stay out of the way. Be a gentleman here. Wrap this thing up properly. And I always take a towel, clean it while I'm wrapping it up. This towel's great. Again, this is your 911 of pressure washers. Take care of it. Treat it like you just treated your car. It'll last you a long, long time. And yes, you're going to have problems. Yes, you're going to have leaks. Yes, you're going to have service that you have to do. But that's part of the process. It's part of the game. It's part of what you've got to do to have a valuable experience. You've got to work for it. Pressure washing is not something that'll take care of itself just by throwing money at it. It's something that you've got to make a commitment to. You do have some pretty good odds that if you use and abuse this thing, it's got a better chance than most. But, and I know many people that use and abuse their pressure washer, their friends with pressure washers, and they get many, many years out of them, but if you just take that extra care, this thing will take care of you for many, many years, many decades if you're lucky. And generally what I do, just let that down there. I just messed it up. So you could use that, keep that Velcro, Velcro strap. I usually just let it hang. Should be fine with it. What the heck? 
I've lost my touch. Take this, hang it off the edge, tuck it in the corner. Yeah, see the 20 foot hose is a little too big to hang off of it. So I would probably put that in a cabinet. Take that little guy, take this. Just like that. And we're done. It's awesome. And then as it gets dirty, I use my same towel. Just keep it clean, keep my baby clean. That's pretty. That's not pretty. Forget what I used to do there. I don't like how that's unwinding. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks to those of you who haven't bought one yet and are going to. I really appreciate you buying it from me. I'm telling you. I'm the guy. You want to buy it from us. It's a benefit to me. It's a benefit to you. I'm going to keep chasing. Keep making great things like the gun. Keep asking Krenzler to improve the machine. Keep figuring out better ways to ship it. And who knows what we can come up with in this world. So, anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'm going to go and finish the car, dry it off, and um, I guess I'll see you on the next Wash and Talk. Go enter the giveaway. Help me get out from underneath this car so we can do another one. See you soon.